Now we are back in the office and I've had a chance here. So I've compiled the, the results that I got from running the 360 soil scan on the Strothman farm earlier today. And now I'm going to walk you through those results here using my uh, dynamite nitrate tracking worksheet. That's kind of a mouthful to say, but uh, it's a worksheet that I developed specifically for these kind of tests. So we're going to kind of go over the results using that. Now, before we begin, I want to make sure to give you just a little bit of background information to sort of help contextualize these results. First and foremost, uh, Scott did strip till this farm, and he put 60 units in his strip, as you'll see here, and that was done on or about April 15th. Now, he pointed out that he wasn't positive that that was the exact date, but he said that would be pretty close. Next, even though this was strip tilled, uh, Scott also had to uh, work it with the vertical tillage as well. And if you're wondering why on earth you do both strip till and VT, that's okay, that's a good question. But he did actually have a pretty good reason. Uh, he doesn't have trash whippers and the soybean residue was so heavy that he was actually afraid he'd get too much hair pinning. So he hit it with the VT to help with that. Now, unfortunately, that did cause some problems by hindering his ability to stay on the strips, which we'll see here in a little bit in the results because his GPS also went a little batty on him at the same time. And again, I'll kind of explain all that as we go through. The next thing to keep in mind is that he also put on 40 units uh, of actual units of nitrogen with, uh, or as a weed and feed, I should say. And that was on or about May 7th. And again, that's an approximation. Uh, this piece right here is going to be critically important though. Okay, so I'm gonna, here, if you can see the little pointer, I'm gonna draw attention to this. This 40 units of weed and feed is gonna be really important to my interpretation of these results. So definitely keep that in the back of your mind as we go through here. And then the other thing to note is that Scott says they've had about four inches of rainfall since it was strip tilled and that first nitrogen was applied. So we got to take that into consideration. And then finally, obviously, I pulled the samples today, which was June 3rd. So that gives you a little bit of background. And let's go ahead and dive into the results. Now, the very first thing that I did was run an in-row sample, and that's what you see right here, this little dot that pops up. And if you'll recall from the nitrate testing sampling video that I did, this is the test that I said came back really surprisingly or shockingly low, or at least it was a lot lower than what I expected. So I ran this sample a couple of times, and what I found was a reading of four parts per million the first time and two parts per million the second time, so I got an average of three. And again, that was a composite of I took a sample in this row, I took a sample in this row, you know, mixed them together, and then that was what we came up with. So, you know, remember that when we went out to the field, though, we, we went out there knowing that this was strip tilled, and, and we assumed that Scott had planted right on top of the strip. Um, this, this result here, the same, hey, three parts per million, really had me concerned. It was our first piece of evidence that maybe he missed that strip. And what we see as we move over here and show the results from the test that were pulled, you know, three inches, six inches, and then nine inches away from the row is, in, in my opinion, really a confirmation that he probably wasn't directly on top of the strip like he wanted to be. And then, you know, as we move out here um, and get the result for the sample that was pulled 12 inches away, the PPM reading really drops off a cliff. And so when you look at these results as a whole, what we've got here just so far, when you look at that as a whole, um, this definitely suggests to me that he probably wasn't right on top of that strip as a result of, again, the combination of his GPS problems and then the, the vertical tillage making it difficult for him to see the, see the strip as well because he was trying to do it by sight. You know, we move out here to the 15, the 18, the 21 inches away, and we still have elevated levels of nitrogen compared to when we go out here to the 24 and the 27. And then obviously I'm going to draw your attention back here to in the row again. These are this 24, 27, and, and right in the row are pretty uniformly low uh, compared to what you see out here, even kind of in the middle of the row. And, and I think the reason for that comes back to what I pointed out up here, which is this 40 units of weed and feed. So I'm going to put this whole picture together for you now, but, but I want to give you this disclaimer, and that is that what I'm about to say is, you know, is my theory based on this evidence, and it's my interpretation of the data. And I'm not saying this is gospel truth, but I do think that the, the evidence that's here, you know, it makes what I'm about to say at least a plausible interpretation. So I think that what we're seeing here is that we missed the strip, as I said earlier, and that's why we see you know, these elevated nitrate levels in the in the sort of six and nine inch zones. That, that's why we see that. And, and and then those are way elevated, really, compared to in the row. Uh, as we move over, you know, to the three and the 12, it just takes this massive nosedive. And I think the reason that uh, there is because we're seeing some some actual nitrogen uptake on the side of the strip over here in particular, you know, there's there's a corn plant there sucking up that nitrogen. And the corn was a V5, and, and even though the majority of uptake happens later in the plant's growth cycle, there's still some uptake that, that has occurred by this point. Now, as we move over here to this, this 15 and 18-inch 18, 18 marks, 
we see levels that are lower than in the strip, but they're elevated compared to the row. So again, they're lower than, than what I think the strip till is, but they're also elevated compared to, you know, over here near the row and what you actually have right here in the row. Um, and again, you know, you, I'm, I'm talking about this side being close to the row, but this, remember, this is only three inches away from this other row. This is only six inches away from this other row. And, and this comes back to the point I made earlier, which is to say that, again, I think that what's going on right here is, is the weed and feed. You know, it's out here where the roots aren't really tapping into it, like they would be over here near the row and then over here near the row where you also have a lot of this, this, uh, nitrogen supply right here for it. And, you know, I don't think that, that what you have here is from the strip bleeding over. I really don't because... All the research that I've done up to this point definitely says that nitrogen just doesn't move very far laterally, guys. Certainly not as far as we've been led to believe anyway in the past. And and if it did move laterally, man, we'd surely expect to see this this 12-inch mark right here um, at a higher nitrate level than the 15 or 18 because you'd think, man, it should be kind of you know coming down this trend line right here, and we don't see that. So again, I think that what we see really in the 12 to 21-inch range is just the residual residual from that weed and feed application. You know, in other words, out here in between the rows, uh, we've got these elevated levels of nitrate compared to over here in the row itself or, or right there by where the plants are actually, you know, actively sucking it up, I think is, is really the difference. So, but it's all at the same time, you know, and again, it's also lower than over here in the hot zone or what I would call the hot zone of the strip till. So that's my theory. But remember, please, uh, that this is just, of course, one data point. And I always say, you know, you cannot draw a trend line from a single data point. And I encourage you to do some of this testing on your own farm. Now, I hope this leaves you with this burning question, and that is, so what? How do I interpret this? What does all this mean? In short, what do we do with this info? Well, what you need to remember is the really important assumption of soil testing, and that's this. Wherever you pull your sample, that test assumes that the core that you just pulled is representative of the entire soil profile. And I think that what this research that I did today, and, and really all of the research that I'm doing suggests, is that we have to be careful with that assumption because it's not necessarily true. You know, when you take a look at this soil profile here, if I pull a sample here, uh, the results can be pretty different from if I pull a sample that is over here. And then to me, where the rubber really meets the road is when we start to think about how this impacts our application method. Guys, we have to stop kidding ourselves. You know, sometimes I hear growers who want to say, yeah, well, the roots grow out in the middle of the row. You know, the roots will get out to this point out here. Uh, yeah, of course they do. <laughs> I'm not arguing that. I don't think anybody else is either. But as you take a look at this picture, and this was taken by my good friend Jamie Brand, what you'll see is that the overwhelming, and I do mean overwhelming majority of the roots, are concentrated in a strip, you know, in this little strip here that's, what, maybe 10 or 12 inches wide? So... What you need to ask yourself is not whether or not the roots will get over there to the middle, but where and how can you minimize the risk of loss of your nitrogen? Is it, you know, out here where you've got very few feeder roots that are hopefully going to grow into it? Or is it in here where we have, uh, you know, just the massive root ball and, a, and the bulk of your roots? Well, that should be a no-brainer, guys. And, and so just remember, as you're hearing and seeing all the social media hype and buzz and all that around these Y-drops, and again, that's, you're seeing the Y-drops here, um, this really, it's, it's not about yield. Yield is great, but the last time I checked, it's profitability that's actually king. And I know some, some of you guys have gotten frustrated with all the advertising and all the marketing and everything, you know, but the reality is this is a good system, guys. I, I, I promote this system because it works. And to me, it's about profitability. You know, I, I personally promote the wide drop system because you can dramatically increase your nitrogen use efficiency by placing less nitrogen here near the base of the plant, that's really what you can do is less near the base of the plant and getting a lot more out of that than you can by putting more actual pounds out here where they may leach or denitrify or feed the weeds or whatever. So if you have questions or comments on the results that you saw here or, or the soil scan or if you'd like to buy your own soil scan or wide drops, please feel free to get a hold of me through any of the contact info that you see here. If you haven't already done so, definitely check out my podcast, which is just uh, Ag Talk with the Ag Doc. And you can find that at www.agtalkwiththeagdoc.com. Be sure to read our blog, which I started here a couple weeks ago. It's called The Agronomist's Journal, and you can find that at theagronomistsjournal.com, or you can get access to both the podcast and the blog 
catalog by just going to my website, which is dynamiteag.com. Uh, you can also submit soil samples or nitrate samples or tissue or water or whatever samples there. If you have something you want me to take a look at, I'm always happy or more than happy to do that, really. You know, if you have general agronomy questions or if you just want to chat, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, again, my number's listed right here. you got my email address, my Twitter, and everything. I'm obviously very passionate about what I do, guys, and, and my goal is to help make you and your operation more profitable. So please, please, please take me up on that offer. Get a hold of me anytime. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. I, I wish you all a safe and successful growing season.